Well, you know, we had Extreme Rules the other day, and you'll never guess what happened at the end of Extreme Rules, everybody. Bray Wyatt returned to WWE. Bray Wyatt, I guess, is the White Rabbit. Maybe he's not. You know, he's got a lot of stuff going on. I don't know what's going on. But I do know that Bray Wyatt is back. And I do know, if you watch the end of the show, they had Bray Wyatt singing. He's got the whole world in his hands. And then they cut around the building, and there was the buzzard. There was the fat pig, Huskus. And uh, various other critters and creatures and two sets of uh, women's tag team titles, or I guess one set of tag team titles. And there's been a lot of people trying to figure out what's going on. It's a puzzle by design. And I don't know what's going on. And they did a they did a Ronda Rousey Liv Morgan match. And they had this finish where I don't even know what happened. I, I could not for the life of me figure out that finish. But whatever whatever that disaster was, what happened was Ronda won, and then Liv, as she was passing out, was smiling. I thought she was laughing because the finish was so botched, <laughs> but apparently after the match was over and they cut away, she sat in the ring and she laughed for a while. So now everyone's trying to figure out this, this mystery. And, uh, you know, I always talked about the lore of the fiend. That was a term that was used on my timeline once. The lore of the fiend. And as much as I mock that, the fact is there is lore regarding the fiend. And at the end of the day, they got a story. And apparently it's a long one. And there will be twists and turns. And it's going to go likely through WrestleMania. And it will involve... Bray, Huskus the Fat Pig, and I'm sure Sister Abigail, and I'm sure Alexa Bliss will figure in, and maybe Liv Morgan, and maybe the returning Bo Dallas, who is in fact on his way back. I cannot believe how much people, God bless the guy, I got nothing against Bo Dallas, but Man, I just threw out on my to my super followers that I'd heard from multiple sources that Bo Dallas was coming back. Man, that exploded in my face. I was like, it's Bo Dallas. Apparently, it's a big deal. Bo Dallas is on his way back. And we'll see where this all goes with The Fiend. Because, you know what they said about The Fiend? They said, you know, a lot of this really dumb stuff that you don't like about The Fiend character, the magic and the goofiness and the worms and all that, that was all Vince. That's what people have said. Well, you know what? Vince is gone. And so we're going to find out, maybe starting tonight, if that was true or if that's just what people said to place blame on how stupid some of that stuff was. We're going to find out soon enough now, won't we, Mike? Yes, we will. I make movies too, pal. Uh, Hey, it's WWE. And... For anything you want to say about it, they sunk some time and effort and some money into that production at the end of that show. Did it do Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins any favors? No, but who cares? It doesn't really matter. That's what the whole thing was building up to. They can do the video package on Seth and Riddle and make you think that was the greatest ending in the world and nothing happened after it. But it was all about getting to that with Bray, and we'll see what happens. Do these characters come to life? Are they just going to go back into whatever form that they were in before? Is this going to be a lot of the spooky and the supernatural as it was before? I guess we're just going to have to see. I'm willing to give it a chance. But I'm not as over the moon about it as some people are. Certainly not as over the moon about it as whoever was controlling the voiceover of the crowd because the sweetening that seemed to take place during that show was epic at times. But I know he did get a good reaction coming back. Look, people will forget about the new thing or the old thing if the new thing is good. So I'm willing to go for the ride here, but you got to prove yourself to me. I'm just not going to give it to you and expect this thing to be great because as we tar- talked about with the art house thing, you know, if people don't react well to this or there are skeptics about it, how can you blame them? Look at the way you buried everybody. And it's, again, not his fault intentionally, but how much the Bray Wyatt character hurt the product and hurt people. So... 
you know, if people are a little skeptical about it, you got to expect that if you're WWE. It's not people that are hating or anything like that. He and WWE have got to prove themselves with this thing, and we'll see what happens. It looks like it's going to be, though. Also, for some of the people listening out here with short attention spans, they look like they may be spending a lot of time on this. So all these clues and things like this, that sort of sleight of hand and that sort of psychology in this story I don't think it's going to be something that you can just kind of blow off. It's something that's going to be looks like it's going to be embedded heavily week after week, and it's going to be something they have a long term plan for. Well, the show we had the brawling brutes beating Imperium, seventeen minutes and fifty seconds in a good old fashioned Donnie Brook match. I cannot recommend this match more. If you're asking me what did I miss, what should I see? Well, what you should see is the old, the good old, fa- not just an old-fashioned, a, a good, good old-fashioned. Old fashioned. Yes. I would call it a great old-fashioned Donnie Brook match. Dude, it was awesome. Brawling Brutes got the win, and uh, just violence and hitting people really hard in safe places, which is my favorite kind of hitting, and it was very good. Ronda Rousey beat Liv Morgan in an Extreme Rules match. Liv's, Liv's, I mean, she's got to be turning heel or something because, man, they have done her zero, f- or they're incompetent. I mean, it's one or the other. They have done her no favors. She gets in there as a baby face. She's afraid to face Ronda Rousey one-on-one, even though the story is she's the only person to ever beat her twice. She has to run for her bat. She finally gets a hold of the bat, and Ronda beats her ass. And then she beats her, and she beats her, and she beats her. Liv gets a little bit of heat. Ronda beats her, beats her, beats her, submits her, and wins the title back. So what a, you know, that moment where she won Money in the Bank was like a fantastic moment. And the cash-in was great. And it was Vince. He had no earthly idea what to do with Liv Morgan. And so they gave her that other win over Ronda, which was totally lame. And you just knew this day was coming, and it has come, and now we need to move on to something else. Wait a second. Before you move on to anything else, I, this just hit me. Who is her? Is she with – because I don't know – can keep up with a lot of wrestlers' personal lives. Is she with Bo Dallas? Uh, well, I mean, that's certainly the rumor, but I have not been to their farm, so I cannot Ah, uh, that's right. Confirm. It was the farm that he was going to retire to. Hmm. You know, he was all about Bo leaving, and her whole thing with her character has been she loses a lot and screws up a lot and takes big L's, but she always believed in herself that she was going to come back. Hmm. I wonder if that all ties together. We will will find out now, won't we? Hmm. Sometimes I'm about ready to retire to a farm. We had Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre in a strap match. They had 10 minutes. They got farms in Hawaii? I would say, yeah, of course they do. I would say that this match was good. I would not say the match was great. I thought that Drew McIntyre was pretty great. I thought that Karrion Cross was fine. They strapped the heck out of each other, and Karrion Cross ended up beating Drew when Scarlet sprayed pepper spray into the eyes of Drew McIntyre. Because if you haven't figured out the feud, they're working the eye. I didn't know you could soften up an eye. But that's what they're doing. Haven't you been watching NXT? Bianca Belair beat Bailey in a ladder match. They went 16 minutes. I thought they they did a good job. I thought they worked hard. I thought the match was good. I would not say that it was great. Bianca ended up, uh, the whole heel crew ran in control, whatever Damage they're called. Control. Damage control. Yeah, it's control all and the way. And, you know, Asuka's injured, and I don't know what's up with Alexa. So Bianca had to run them all off on her own, and then she climbed up after hitting Bailey with her finish on a ladder, got the belt, and won. So she is still the champion. Finn Balor beat Edge in an I Quit match. You know the finish. First off, the first 20 minutes of this, just the longest, most nothing happened in match ever. Oh. Last 10 minutes when everybody ran in, it was actually a great dramatic story. And then Edge quit after they threatened to concerto his wife. And then after he quit, they did it anyway. Heat. I don't want to hear about crowd sweeting. I got some heat. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, So that uh, Finn Balor-Edge match, obviously everybody ran in and 
first the heels run in, and then Ray runs in, and then Ray gets laid out, and then Beth runs in, and Beth actually killed everybody. It was a great comeback. And then Edge is handcuffed to the ropes, and she helps him, but then she gets knocked out by Rhea. Edge gets beat up and held down, and they do the big threat. You either say I quit, or man, we're going to give her this concerto, and he... He's forced to say, I quit. And they go, say it again. And so he's got to say it twice, which they actually, you know, for those of you that uh, still, and, you know, it's fine. I got a little PTSD, too. But uh, this storytelling is clearly way better with Triple H than with Vince, because this whole this has all been these these seeds have been planted for a while. What's happened in this feud? Well, the Judgment Day has been going after Edge and Ray. And they're trying to recruit AJ Styles. AJ doesn't want to join. Finn wants him to do the gimmick, and he doesn't want to do it. And last week, they're building up the I Quit match, and Edge makes it very clear. There's nothing that you can physically do to me. There's no amount of pain that you can put me in where I will say I quit. And, of course, now we know why. Well, he quit because he was trying to save his wife. And... The finish obviously sets up uh, Rhea Ripley and Beth down the road. It sets up mixed tags down the road. And what we've also got going here, a secondary storyline, is that Finn Balor wants AJ to join him and the Judgment Day. And after they beat him up, who will Edge, who will, will uh, AJ bring in to counter the Judgment Day? And I cannot say... I cannot say 100% that the Good Brothers are heading to WWE, but I'm pretty sure the Good Brothers are heading to WWE (laughs) because they are finished with Impact Wrestling. That is confirmed. And so their options are like AEW, New Japan, or WWE. And within WWE, the belief is that the Good Brothers are coming in. And if you look at the AJ storyline going back weeks... I mean, I think it's pretty clear they've been planting the seeds for AJ and the Good Brothers to reunite, and they take on Finn Balor and Damian Priest and Dominic in six-man matches, and you've got a feud there as well. So you can see that they are planting seeds, and they are paying those things off, and they're not just dropping stuff. So this is an improvement over the Vince regime. And it's fascinating because when are they coming in? Does Carl Anderson drop the Never title first? I believe that he will drop the Never title first. So there's that, you know, which could be, look, that could be an interesting thing, too, if WWE just lets that go a little bit past so they can say that they were being, you know, benevolent and look at how gracious we are with this crossover. See, we can do that sort of thing, too. Um, You know, I, I think that would be thinking more like you that they're going to go ahead and have him drop the title beforehand but you never know you never know in this new era of things but it also interests me that could you do for survivor series i would love to see this and i know you have the caveat in wwe that you can't have man on woman but one person that one woman that's actually had man on woman violence happen to them because of randy orton giving her the rko is beth phoenix And if the Good Brothers come in and you have Rey Mysterio and you have AJ Styles, a great fifth person would be Beth Phoenix. And you have Rhea Ripley on the other side with Finn Balor and Dominic. And I guess you would have to get somebody else to pair along with them alongside uh, Damian Priest. So I to me, I would love to have something like that actually happen because Beth being back is great. Beth in small doses doing anything is fantastic. And I thought how everything came across on Saturday night or Sunday night, I thought was great. And then we had Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins in the main event, a fight pit match with Daniel Cormier as a special referee. And Daniel Cormier was just a special referee. And he did a couple spots early, and then he stayed out of the way. They had one questionable spot with him at the end, which was when Seth took a curb stomp. And instead of just counting like he was supposed to, Daniel Cormier made sure he was okay first and then counted, which they played up in storyline as, why did he do that? And Seth is yelling at him, and the announcers are questioning him. And ultimately, you know, it made sense that Daniel and Seth would have a confrontation at the end. And Mike Tyson would punch out Shawn Michaels. Didn't happen. Instead, Matt Riddle got the big win. 
And man, those lights went out immediately. This was this was old school TNA to the back, and they did the return of Bray White. We never saw Seth again. We never saw Riddle again. So even though Riddle got his big win, I mean, they didn't really make a big deal out of it. And Seth Rollins, I'm sure, is going to go to Raw tonight, and I would expect he'll beat Bobby Lashley for the, uh, the U.S. title. And I think he has a U.S. title, right? Is it the U.S. or Intercontinental? U.S. It's U.S., right? Yes. Yeah, because old Gunter's the Intercontinental Champion yeah. still, who US. beat Sheamus, by the way. So yeah, this was a this was a good match. I wouldn't call it was a great match. I wouldn't say it was a great match. So really, what you had on this show was good match, long match with a great finish. Good match, good match, not so good match, awesome match, and that's the story of extreme a sto- a, a tale of extremes. Although we did not get the horrible match on this show. Feels like the fingertips of Paul Heyman, uh, kind of all into that storyline with Dominic and AJ and Ray and Edge and everybody being involved in there. And what a better place than Philadelphia to actually have that kind of drama. It actually worked out really well there. And that crowd was fantastic as well, too, because I know somebody pointed out, hey, you know, the sweetening was loud. Maybe the sweetening was loud because the crowd was actually loud and they really wanted to amplify it. But I thought it was actually a really good night for them. And as far as getting some interest going leading into raw they did as good of a job as they can even though they're really at the mercy of football tonight anyway but for their fans that's how you got to look at it for their fans they're at least trying come on bros who cares about miz and gritty and dexter anybody honestly he's a big deal dude no come on gritty is a big deal gritty could be the new san diego chicken if they wanted him to get out of the wawa he could be a new chicken Wow. Hey, a lot of people thought Pete Rose could be underneath that thing. He he needs the money all the time. For good reason, seemingly. Not a good guy, Pete Rose. I hope that someday people say something like that about me. Hey, he could be the new chicken. Not a good guy? Not a good they'll probably say he was a chicken and not a good guy. Chicken chest. Hey, I'm actually. a great I'm a great guy. No, you're not. Whether you like it or not. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Benevolent. NXT tonight, we've got... Your old friends call you sociopath, which I got to be Ooh, honest. name one. I got to be Craig. Craig doesn't count. The... <laughs> you are a great Horrible balance judge of, talent. of sociopath and psychopath. You are an incredible balance of that. But you always pay on time. I got to give you that one for sure, too. There's a lot of criticism about professional wrestling. You all right over there? What's going on with you? There's double the mic. Sorry. No, what do you need so much water for today? It's coffee. Put that away. Crying out loud, it's nighttime. You're not going to be able to sleep. You have to have another drink right now. God, help me. Now, where was I? People didn't like this so much, I hear. I can't even remember what I was angry about. I got a question. Is anyone else thirsty? How did I not see that? uh, You absolute... God, I hate everybody on this show. It's not an issue of whether the listeners can hear it. I don't care about you. It's about me! Sociopath. God. Me? Yeah! Now my wife is texting me, Craig. I hope you're happy about that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.